Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here to talk to you about Without Escape. This is a point and click adventure with a bit of a horror twinge to it. And it came out on the Vita pretty recently, got review code from East Asia Soft. Not the person I was expecting to publishing this, I thought it would have been sometimes you, but... No, it wasn't them, it was East Asia Soft and how far they've fallen on the Vita, huh? Don't blame them, it's not like there's anything left to release on this damn thing. Anyway, one thing I want to point out immediately that you just saw in the video itself, if you're watching it at the same speed that I am, is that the... <laughs> it's so funny to me. In the settings menu, if you put the brightness and the gamma too high, it actually makes a number that you need to read to finish the game invisible. It makes the light so bright you can't even read the page. After seeing that, I thought to myself, Oh man, it's going to be one of those games, isn't it? I'm just going to put the meter down, I'm going to record it all in one go, and it was a good thing too, because it only lasts about 45 minutes. And I'm going to just play it through and talk about it later, because if I leave it to talk about it while I'm playing it, it's just going to go straight to shit. Thankfully, I made it about, like, 15 minutes in before I needed to use a guide! <laughs> Because it's one of those sorts of games, but we'll get to that. So, as you can see, it's a 3D rendered adventure game. Like, someone's modelled this and then rendered the pictures into, st into small single images that you then navigate around. And that's probably the best part of the game. It all looks a little bit fake and a, a little bit weird, but... Outside of all that, it's actually pretty well done. And when you get to the second half of the game, it all starts to look actually pretty impressive. Like, the guy's... The guy's very clearly done a decent job with it, and apparently he did it all himself. Like, one dude. So, you know, I'll give you a thumbs up for that. And I do apologize for the fact that the video quality isn't great. Like, you can very see, clearly see, like, color banding on the walls and stuff like that. That's just a result of me recording the game with uh, a specific transfer mode that doesn't have, like, interlacing. If I recorded it with the interlacing mode turned on, it probably would have looked great. But yeah, it legitimately does look good on the Vita screen, even if it, it's all a little bit fake and weird. They even have a couple of, like, 3D pre-rendered cutscenes that show up from time to time, and they almost look good. But unfortunately, they stammer, they stutter, and they're all over the place. There's very clearly some V-Sync tearing and stuff going on. The videos weren't encoded very well, or Unity doesn't play videos on Vita very well. Yes, I said Unity, so it's pretty much guaranteed to just tank in performance after a certain point. Once you get to the second half of the game, and you get out into the main rooms of that, it just dies. The cursor starts to stammer un unbelievably. It's all just weird. It's a pain in the ass, but it's Unity. What the fuck do you expect? You, you literally can't draw, like, a circle on the Vita in Unity without the damn thing running at, like, 55 frames a second. It's dumb. Unity is dumb, and nobody should have ever used it on the Vita, but so many people did, and it sends so many games to shit. So the soundtrack is actually pretty decent. I'm playing this video at two times speed because, like, I was being pretty dumb early on, but it, it does help fit the mood a little bit. Other than that though, not really that notable, not something I put onto an iPod or something like that. Who even uses iPods anymore? <laughs> well, to be fair, people probably still are using them, because those things are tanks, they last for ages. But yeah, it's alright, it fits the mood. And another thing that's worth noting, because this is a problem with something that would happen from time to time in um, certain games that are published like this, but the English is actually pretty good. The writing's a bit dry and it makes everything feel a bit un... like, unnatural. But at the same time, there's no major typos, there's no major punctuation errors that I could see. It was... It, it's fine in that regard. The credits actually lists voice. Like, someone did a voice that I didn't hear. That one was weird. And the controls. So let's talk about the controls. It's very simple, just move the analog stick around and press the X button to interact with stuff, but it moves really quickly, so you have to hold the square button to keep the cursor from flinging all over the damn screen. And this control scheme makes it an absolute pain in the ass to play the game. 
if you're trying to go for the third ending speed run, because you can play the game normally okay, but if you want to go for the third ending, you have to speed run the like two thirds of the game in five minutes, and it's impossible. I I tried it. I swear to God, I tried as hard as I could to speed run like the first two thirds of the game so that I could get the third ending, and I couldn't do it. It just it, it it's it's too it's too rough. Even on computers where you had to play this with like a mouse, it would have been a bit rough. But in on the Vita, no. It's just, it's too slow, it's too cumbersome, it's too, it's too imprecise to get it done within five minutes. And that's really frustrating. Like, it, it's immensely frustrating. I don't know why, like, I swear to God, I, 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 you know what, I'm gonna have to go right now. Like, I recorded my speedrun, right? I recorded my, um, my speedrun attempt, so, hang on, we go from about a minute eleven... to about a yeah something like seven minutes is about what I got and I was following a guide to the letter and it was still like just yeah too slow fuck you honestly one of the most frustrating things about the game is the controls the second most frustrating thing is the puzzle design yes how many of you have played a bunch of Escape the Room games before? I have. Do you know what they have in common? Most of the puzzles in them are related to getting keys, which you then unlock to get other keys, which you then unlock to get more keys. Half of this game's puzzle design is finding keys to get other keys. Some of them are ridiculous too. Like, there's this one particular one where you have to turn the water on because the water's, uh, you need to get something out of a tap. But then you turn the tap on, and it spits out an entire Swiss army knife with a lockpick on the end. Now, does that make any sense to anyone? Turning on a tap to get a Swiss army knife from the faucet. No, it doesn't make any sense to me either. There's a couple of other ones which are really weird like that too. Like, you go downstairs the first time, you look at the television and it says, I need to find the batteries for the remote to turn the TV on. While the TV has very clearly got buttons on the front of it that you could use to turn it on. Nani? Nani? That's okay. I don't even know. There's another one too. Uh, this one I'll help you out with. Uh, you, when you first ring the phone and go back to your bedroom and then go back down to get the level, I have no idea what you were supposed to do with it. Turns out you need the level to level out the picture in the bedroom. Why would you need a level to level out a picture on a wall? Why the hell do you need a level for a picture on a wall? You can just do it yourself! Do you not have any sense of equilibrium guy who's running around this house? Just tilt the picture a little. It'll be fine. <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, I'm pretty bad with household chores and what have you, but even I'm not that stupid. That is impressively dumb. That is almost impressively dumb. There's a couple of other things like that too. There's some pixel hunting going on. One of the worst ones is in the second half of the game where you need to go down towards the basement. And there's a very thin grey strip against a bunch of other thin grey-ish things that you need to click in order to get a respective item. Also, if you're in the kitchen right now, there's a bloody bowl that's just sitting there that's... um. He says, everything seems to be in order here. There's a broken plate on the table. <laughs> this game is just odd. In a lot of different ways. Yeah, what was, what was I saying? God damn it. <laughs> I completely forgot where I was going with this. Uh, yeah, the, the just this thin grey strip on this overall, like, really dark image that I was never able to see. I never would have seen it without a guide. And there's a couple of other things like that as well. The puzzle design in this game is just not great. It's nowhere near zero escape level. Thankfully, there's no, no such thing like red herrings or anything like that. There are a couple of things that hint you towards, like, the game's overall ending and the fact that there's a, like, a, a couple of secret endings around the place. But, I mean, 
it's the the puzzle design is just frustrating. I had to go I had to resort to a guide way more than I relatively should have. I'm not particularly good at these sorts of games, I'll admit, but some of them are just obscure, man. It's just a it's just dumb. It's really dumb. Speaking of dumb, let's talk about the story. So, you wander around a regular house for a bit, then you get a uh, then you get your TV batteries for your remote, and then once you hit the remote, you get teleported into what basically turns into Demon World, and you have to wander around there for a bit. And Demon World is interesting, because, well, it's Demon World. It looks the part, it sounds the part, it has a bunch of people hung up around the place. It's not great, it's definitely not great. And then you get to the actual ending. Where it turns out everything you were looking at before was previously pointless. You are now God and you have to recreate the universe. Although they do give you the option of jumping off and just falling to your doom. But both of them are just kind of irrelevant. Because they come out of nowhere. There's, there's like a couple of hints that these people exist. But it, it's, it's, it's when you go down into the demon world and find all the demon stuff. And then all of that turns out to be completely irrelevant. And then all the, like, everything except, like, the televisions turns out to be completely irrelevant. It's like, what's all that other stuff doing there? What's that there for? It's just there to look cool? That's pretty much the long and the short of it. Then, as I said before, there is a third ending, which ties back into the, like, the first two endings. Which does result in you escaping for about 30 seconds. Again, I didn't get to it. I just looked it up on the internet. Because... It was a, again, a massive pain in the neck to try and run it because you need to get through the first two thirds of the game in five minutes with terrible controls. It's just not going to happen. Good luck anyone who tries. There are also three other endings and two of them are kind of gag endings where you end up dead due to your own, due to your own stupidity. It's fine. I think they were there to try and make you laugh, but they didn't make me laugh because I'd already been through the other endings at this point and they just weren't worth the effort and then there's a sixth ending which turns the entire world into like a 1990s 3d rendered tribute to older pc games and all that where you just decide to delusionally stay in this uh low poly 3d world forever which is even weirder and i did try and get this ending but i couldn't i went and looked up the um I went and looked up the solution to it. I went and looked up the way to get to it. And it says, put the number 1990 into the uh, father's box. And I did, and it didn't work. Even after I examined all the items in the room, it just didn't do anything. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what, what that was supposed to be about, but it didn't happen. So yeah, I wasn't even able to go look that one up. And that one was also like two minutes long and kind of weird. But still, it's just like... It's got the semblance of comedy, but it just doesn't work. Especially after you get the regular endings. Because there's no way that you're going to find the secret endings without playing the regular endings. And the regular endings just come out of nowhere. Have basically nothing to do with the plot. Or everything that you've been exploring so far. Except for like a newspaper clipping. But that, that's basically it, really. Thankfully, the trophies are... Well, I say thankfully, but it's a trophy hunter's dream. You can finish them in about 10 minutes and you'll get the platinum trophy. You only need to get to one ending to get all the trophies you need for the platinum. The rest are just like, you know, examine the slippers and examine the TV. And that's it. Like, <laughs> I don't know why those two are trophies. Let alone gold trophies, because you can literally do them within like two minutes of starting the game. But that's a thing. So, yeah. That's that's pretty much it. I don't think it's worth the time. The puzzles are obtuse, the controls are horrible, and the story just doesn't really go anywhere logical, reasonable, or otherwise entertaining. Even with the odd endings out that just just don't really do much for me. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I got. Not, not something I'd recommend. And it's, it's weird, too, because this game came out back on the, um, 
Brain work with me here. This game came out back on the Xbox Live Indie Game service for 99 cents. Which for a point and click adventure game that only lasts an hour, sure, I guess I can go with that. But when you then release the game again on Steam and the Vita and PS4 and Xbox One... And, uh, might be coming out on the Switch too, I don't, I don't remember. Also, I thought my Vita crashed at one point, that was a little bit weird, like, oh man, I forgot about, I forgot about that scene, where the sound just starts to go and it's like, oh god, it's crashed, has it? Not a good idea to put it on something that's, that frequently crashes on games that are stuttery. Really not great, but there you go. But yeah, um... When you put it out on all of those other platforms for five bucks, it just doesn't seem worth it. Go play Zero Escape instead or something like that. It just, yeah, this, this isn't really worth your time. This has been Blue Maxima and I will see you all next time.